First story. My manchild. Red pill believing partner thinks I should not make more money than him and resents me for not allowing him to control my money. He now demands I name our baby his surname just because he is the man. So I named the baby my surname. And now his entitled mom with the same bullshit beliefs is harassing me. So I had a baby some weeks ago with my partner, to whom I'm not married. We've been together a while, and I've made many compromises in this relationship. While discussing the baby's name, we had a few disagreements on names, but ultimately decided on a name we both liked well enough. The surname was a sticking point. He wanted the baby to have his name alone. I offered to hyphenate because, logistically, it's easier for the baby to have both of our names. He's been drinking the red pill cool aid, lately a large bone of contention in this relationship, and went off about how it's tradition and the right thing to do and his right as a man to have the baby have his surname. He told me I'd be emasculating him and may as well be a single parent if I don't grant him this one little ask. My word is final babies having one surname. This was late in my pregnancy, and I didn't have it in me to fight, so I told him that I understood what he was saying. FF to three weeks ago, when the baby's birth certificate came, he blew a gasket when he saw that I'd given the baby my surname. He rehashed the conversation above, saying I agreed to give the baby his surname. This is where I might be. I did nothing of the sort. I told him I understood him, which I did, but I never said I agreed with him. I told him there was no way I was doing all the work of making a baby for him to stick his name on it. When we built up tradition, I told him it's also traditional for him to marry me before having a baby, but he was happy to ignore that. I told him it was traditional for him to be the provider, but I do that too, and I pointed out other holes in his logic. I told him that trying to bully me into submission with his red pill because I was exhausted from pregnancy didn't work. He should have known better than to expect me to not share a surname with my child. He said the baby should only have one surname. They do. So why is he mad? He went crying to his brothers and mother all traditionalists and misogynists, and now they're all up in arms. Ada. Ida. There seems to be some confusion, we are not married or engaged. I don't believe in it, and he's never seen the point of bring the state into your relationship. So we agreed to never marry. He's on the birth certificate as the father. The baby just has my last name, but my father is listed. Thanks for your feedback. I'll be asking him to come for a talk, so I can clearly address the issues you guys have helped me see. Thank you for that. Relevant comments. Commenter. NTA. You told the truth and nothing more. If I read your post correctly, you agreed that the baby would have one surname. You didn't agree on which one. So, why are you still with this guy? He doesn't respect you. He doesn't provide for you and the baby. Please don't say because you need him or love him. OP, I am reconsidering the relationship. The truth is, he wasn't always like this. He fell on hard times and unfortunately chose to cope with them in an unhealthy way. At his core, I believe he is good but I need to have a frank conversation about the ideologies he's leaning into and the harm they're causing to our relationship. To another commenter asking why she is with him. I hate that I sound like every enabler, and perhaps I need to do some introspection to see if that's what I've become. But he wasn't always like this. Life's been hard for him lately, and his coping strategies have led us here. I need to have a frank chat with him about how it's affecting us. Commenter. Was he not there when you were filling out the forms? Because that's pretty telling too. NTA. What to name the baby is definitely a valid conversation to have. But he wasn't having a conversation with you. He was trying to bulldoze you without compromise. OP. I registered the baby on my own. He was there for the birth and everything. But his paternity leave was pretty short. So the admin of registering fell on me. Commenter. NTA. And please do not relent and change the baby's name. I just had a baby in August, and SHT's tiring. Congrats on your new addition and my condolences. You have to spend 18 years dealing with this family, though. OP. I am beyond in love with my tiny human. I hope you're doing well with yours too. Should this spell the end, I'm lucky to have my village, and the means to minimize the suckiness of breakups. There's no world in which any child I birth will not share a surname with me. My compromise of a double-barreled surname stands. No other offer is on the table. Commenter. Info. Why are you still in contact with all those people who do nothing for you? It seems you would lose a lot of stress, anxiety, and financial hardships just by cutting this person loose. OP, which people, sorry, baby's dad and his family. He stormed out on Thursday night and Friday morning. His mother sent me a voicemail berating me. I've since received messages from his family criticizing me for my decision. 
but no word from my partner. I have not responded to any of them, so it's one-way communication at the moment. OP's life. I'm very fortunate to be in a position where I don't need anything from him. I'm financially secure, I have a good job, and I have a good support system. I don't need his financial backing to raise this child. I've texted him, asking him to come home so we can talk. I'm thinking of having a mediator or neutral party there to avoid things getting out of hand. OP is voted NTA. Update. One month later. So it turns out, he's got deep-seated resentment for me. Lol. He resents me for. Earning more money than him. Being further in my career than he is. Not losing my job during COVID like he did. Having parents who love and support me. Not being a submissive woman lol. Having a present and loving father. Not combining our finances under his control, thus making him feel small. On the brighter side, I'm 12 weeks postpartum and already 75 kg lighter. Editor's note. This has caused some confusion. OP is making a joke about losing the boyfriend. So when I last came here, I said I'd asked him to come home and discuss our future with baby, preferably in the presence of a neutral party. He left me on hold for a few days, though I could see he was spying on us through the ring doorbell and baby's monitor. I disconnected them both, and he finally responded. He came home, still irate. His stance still hadn't changed. He seemed to have been bolstered by the days he spent with his family. He rejected my request for us to do this in the presence of a couple's therapist, the best neutral compromise I could offer. I asked him how he proposed we move forward, and then he went on a rant where the above came out. It was a full mask-off moment. If there was any part of me that wanted you guys to be wrong about him, it died that day. He again rejected the offer to hyphenate the baby's surname. Apparently, I'm disrespectful and insolent funny enough. His mother's favorite words to scold people she disagrees with for refusing to do what's right and give babies their rightful surname. I told him I wouldn't go through the administrative nightmare of having a different surname for my child. And lots of data shows a double-barred surname is social currency that has positive connotations. Nope, he wouldn't budge. I told him neither would I my baby, either has both our surnames or mine alone. He asked if this was a hill, I wanted this relationship to die on. If I was prepared to throw half a decade down the drain over my silly little feminism. I told him I wasn't sure there was anything left to fight for. We broke up. Thankfully, our in his name lease expires at the end of May. I called my dad, and he came to help me back up, baby. The ex went back to his mom's while we packed. I messaged him to suggest, we still need couples counseling. We need to learn to be co-parents, and they can help us establish a healthy way of doing that. He again said no to that, so. My mom wanted to take me and my baby on a baby moon holiday after this stressful period. But he would grant permission for me to take my baby abroad. It was at that moment that I wished I didn't have him on the birth certificate, like some of you accused me of. It's going to be a long road ahead. I've instructed a lawyer to help us set up a formal agreement to avoid this in the future. He's not responding to correspondence from the lawyer, so that's fun. He's sulking. He used to do this a lot when things didn't go his way. I hope he'll soon realize I no longer have time for his BS, and I won't be toyed with because I called his bluff and ended the relationship. To end on a bright note, the house I wanted us to buy a couple of years ago, which he talked me out of until he was back on his feet again despite us being able to afford it on my salary alone is back on the market. I took it as fate. It's time to move on from this man. It's a beautiful Victorian terrace near good schools, good transport links, a small garden, and close to my parents. It'd be the perfect home for my baby and me. I put in an offer last night. Wish me luck, it's in a chain. So if my offer is accepted, it won't be ours for months. But my parents have allowed my baby and me to move into their grandmother's annex for free my village. Relevant comments taken from the update post on OP's page and Ada. Commenter. He sounds like a horrible person. And he'll probably pass down his horrible ideologies of women and relationships to your child. But hey, I don't know you or him. No offense. And that relationship. But is co-parenting even worth it? OP, I mean, he's not asked to see the baby since we broke up. So, to be honest. I don't think I'll have to do much co-parenting with him. Commenter. Unless there's an actual custody order in place, you don't need permission to take that baby anywhere. OP. I wish that were true. In my country, you need permission from both parents to take a child out of the country. Commenter. I would go on your baby moon holiday with your mom. OP. Definitely planning on it. I have 18 months of leave, and I'd planned on doing a few trips. He's presented with a bump, but I'm sure we'll overcome it and take the baby to new places. Second story.
I called off my wedding after I caught my fiancé cheating. Now entitled Xmil started harassing me and wishing I got sod. So I exposed her secret affair to the whole family. Ruining her and her son's lives beyond repair. I, 24F, and my fiancé, 28M, have been together for two years and engaged for three months. We are both Indians. My friend, let's call her Leela, happens to be on a dating app called Hinge. She recently sent me a screen recording of my fiancé's verified profile. Upon discovering his profile, my heart was shattered, and millions of thoughts were racing through my mind. I first thought it would be fake, but his profile has a voice prompt where he's speaking a few lines, and it's his voice. I confronted him, and at first he denied and blamed me for shutting up, and I'm on the dating app. I pulled out my phone and showed him his profile, and he went numb. After a few minutes of him hyperventilating, he confessed that he was scared of tying the knot and wanted some kind of validation from another woman. But he hasn't met anyone in real life or done anything physical. I doubt he's lying about not meeting, and I asked him to give me some time. I told this to my parents, and they were of course upset and wanted to talk to his parents, which they did. His mother's response was that he is not married and deserves to blow off some steam somewhere else, and he complained about me not making time for his parents. Mind you, I always had a weird vibe about his mother, and she proceeds to say, Who will marry her? His family is now harassing me, calling me all sorts of names, and threatening to spread nasty rumors about me. And this mother effer is apologizing and begging to take him back and marry him. This son of a bee told me he was a virgin, but is not and wanted to lose it on the first night of our marriage. But he's just a manipulative liar. I am at a loss for words and mentally drained. What should I even do? Edit mini update 1 I just told my parents that the wedding is off, and they were relieved to hear this. We hugged and discussed returning the ring. Update. Firstly, I cried a lot after seeing the comments on my first post, and slept for the first time, properly after days of this SHT happening. Thank you, everyone, for being so lovely. In the morning, my mother was with her girlfriends for a get-together, which happens once a month, and in between her calls, she received a few calls from her ex's mother, which she ignored. Then his mom started messaging her about berating me sexually, and in one text, she wrote, I hope your daughter gets roped. Now this thing took my mom into a whole different dimension that her friends have never seen, and she blurted out about my situation to her friends and showed them the text. They were all too shocked, and it turns out the ex's mother was having an affair a few years ago and played a perfect wife by posting lovey-dovey stuff with her husband on Facebook. Everybody in that community knows this about her, and thinks either her husband is too blind to look at her unfaithfulness, or is just a kirk. This woman has been the subject of gossip for quite some time. My mom fortunately kept the screenshots before his mother tried to delete the texts. She thinks she's too smart to just write some fups and act like an innocent bee. Before leaving to return the ring, I asked my brother, he's a lawyer to come with me, as he knows about the situation fully, and he asked me to just video record all the conversation when we reach there. He will do the same by any chance if my phone turns off. His mom called me every name in the book, as you can imagine, and said that I'm a disgrace and all. I just looked at her point blank and said, Disgrace like having an affair behind her husband's arse. And taking those trips to meet your affair partner, Ibki went all white, and she just whispered, Don't speak it loud. Apparently, her kids and extended family don't know about her actions. My ex was standing there obviously confused, and I handed back the ring with a printout of a list of possible sexual diseases in clinics to get tested before he tries to get laid with another girl. And I pointed this out to his mother to get tested too. This was the list idea one Redditor suggested to me, and I loved it. This son of a pig started tearing up, and I just had enough of him at that point in his crocodile tears. He looked like tears were coming out of a turd. He kept pleading to reconsider my decision, and how he regrets everything, and will get a separate house where we both can live and build our lives. But I had enough of him, and this time I threatened that if they tried to contact me and my family again, I'd get the police involved. Before leaving, I pointed out my phone recording, and they looked like they'd been drowning in shame. We left seeing those two pieces of crap mumbling and crying. Apparently, I'm in a group chat where guests people from his and my family, our friends, and colleagues are added during the time of our ring ceremony as we gave online invitations. So I decided to send his screen recorded profile and other screenshots of him and his mother to that group and explain why I'm cancelling the wedding and apologize to them for wasting their time and money on these effortless people. Our mutual friends have reached out to me because they are disgusted with him and don't wish to continue their friendship with him. His male friends told me that a few days ago, he was asking them about going on a trip 
as a bachelorette party to any one of these places. Thailand, Dubai, Goa, Vietnam, or the Philippines. And they of course rejected it as some of them are married or in a committed relationship. But my ex said it's a one-time experience to be away from those loud speakers and enjoy other women. He offered to get a VIP area booked at a club for all of them. They all thought he was bluffing and couldn't do such a thing because he loves me too much. But the good part is that our friends have offered to plan a little get-together for me and are not responding to him. And his colleagues will most likely spread this factual rumor about him at his workplace. My mom and dad came up to me while I was crying so hard on the floor. My brother held me and finally had a fresh breath of air after all this had ended. My dad surprised us with a takeout and my parents fed me with their own hands because I was so physically and mentally drained from all the drama that I'd lost my appetite. Third story. F. Mill attempts to take over the wedding, belittling O.P. at every turn, while her fiancé stays ignorant and takes her mom's side. So, she calls off the wedding and informs the guests from the fiancé's side not to attend. I'm 25 F. getting married in September, and my fiancé's mom 50s F. is trying to get us to change details. My fiancé 26 F. does whatever her mom says without consulting me. These are petty details that don't really matter, like flowers and centerpieces. The order of the bridal processions, where people will sit at the reception, is that kind of thing. None of these things are things that I have always dreamed of having a certain way. And my fiancé knows that and thinks that it means that the person who cares more should get more say. I disagree, and I wish she would butt out. My fiancé's mom has never been that nice to me. She isn't mean, but she is thoughtless. She does stuff like forget that I'm coming to dinner and I end up eating a frozen dinner that she microwaved while everyone else has a nice meal. I can't help but feel that she thinks that we are just silly little girls. She treated her other daughter like she was becoming a real adult when she got married to a man, and to us, she keeps saying that we're just so young, and we should reconsider. My fiancé's sister was younger than us when she got married by two years. She thinks we can't handle planning on our own. I did almost everything myself, and she has decided that I did it all wrong. We wanted a certain flower. She insisted that this type of flower wouldn't hold up in the heat. It's a late September evening wedding. And it won't be that hot. And she tried to have it changed. The entire color scheme is based on this flower. So I said no. My fiancé and I fought about the stupid flowers for a whole weekend. The latest thing is that she disagrees with the bridal processions. Obviously, there are two brides. So things won't be 100% traditional. We found a way that we liked. My future mother-in-law hates it and thinks it will confuse the guests. She's been calling her family members that are involved in the bridal parties to try to get them on her side. I just want her to stop and accept that the plans have been made. My fiancé loves her mom and thinks she's the best at everything. She thinks that because her mom was an event planner for a couple of years in the 90s, she knows more and should be given the reins. I'm sick of it, and I fantasize about pulling a Lorelei Gilmore for my own wedding. Help? Update. I tried posting about this a while back and didn't get a huge response. Someone said that this sub is very active and that I might get some advice here because it involves the woman who will become my mother-in-law, my fiancé, and I have a date to get married in September. Anyone who has planned a wedding knows that changing things at this stage is difficult and expensive. It's not stopping my future mother-in-law. She loves to say, nothing is written in stone. I started keeping a journal of what she tried to change from memory without consulting it. The flowers, the bride's people, the order of the procession, the layout of the seats at the ceremony, my dress, the photographer, and some rules we decided to implement for the ceremony long story there. I should mention that we are both women. My future mother-in-law hasn't been overtly homophobic, but I suspect that it affects how she views us, whether she realizes it or not. It's nothing concrete. I just sense it based on a lifetime of developing instincts for this stuff. She is dismissive of us and treats it like it's not a real wedding. I think she thinks of us as silly little girls who are playing house. She didn't treat her straight daughter this way when she was married to a man, and my future sister-in-law was younger than us when she married her husband. That wedding was regarded as the event that ushered her into adulthood. For us, though, the wedding is proof that we're silly and not ready for adulthood. She had told us both many times that we didn't need to get married to validate our relationship. My fiancé thinks her mother is just lending us her expertise because we're party-planning amateurs. Her mom was an event planner for a couple of years in the 90s. They were corporate events, not weddings. She also has the philosophy that, whoever cares more and will be most upset if they don't get their way should have it their way. She says I don't care that much about flowers, so I should let her have them. 
I remind her 50 times a day that I'm getting married. Not her mom. My fiancé is not girly. And her only request was, please don't make me choose between 50 shades of ivory tablecloths. She has been more hands-off, so she isn't as emotionally invested. She doesn't get that I have been putting a lot into this, and to have someone wreck it all is depressing. This isn't usually my thing but I've been surprised at how much I enjoyed the planning. However, her mom is known by everyone as the planner, and everyone lets her have events because they know she enjoys them. A lot of her relatives have told me, I must be so relieved to have her, because everything she does ends up perfect. They assume two butch-looking women are allergic to this kind of thing, I guess. I don't know what to say, and I won't lie, so I just say, she certainly loves planning stuff. To get my fiancé on board, I've compared the wedding to a garden, how would she feel if she spent a year planting a garden, paying a lot of money for it? And when it's almost done, the next door neighbor comes in and demands that you rip out some flowers. Would you do it if the neighbor said, I used to work at a plant nursery for two years in the 90s, and seemed emotionally invested in your garden? Or would you think they're nutcases and tell them to leave because it's not theirs? She seemed to get it and apologized. But then the next time her mom called her, she sat me down and asked me to consider changing another wedding detail. I'm feeling unsupported by my fiancé, and my friends are really concerned. I'm writing this at 4 a.m. and watching Gilmore Girls on low volume while my fiancé sleeps upstairs. I used to curse at the screen when Lorelei ran out on her wedding, but now I find myself identifying with how panicked she gets about the wedding. This has already gotten long enough, so I'll end it here. Update. After some tough love the other day, I had a discussion with my fiancé. She dismissed my concerns and told me things such as, I get why my mom cares, but I don't get why you care. It's not even your thing. I don't understand how she can't see that my wedding should be my thing. She is disgusted that I want to do all of this, girly SHT. I tend to shut down and get quiet when I'm upset, so I went upstairs and tried to sleep. I texted a friend that I trust, and he convinced me to get away for a couple of days. I packed a bag and told her that I needed some space for a while, and that we both had a lot to think about. She seemed really shocked even though we had just been talking for hours about how she's letting me down. I think she needs me to scream and cry for her to understand that I'm upset. I was still in the car at my friend's house when I got a call from my fiancé's mom. She called her, and I guess she said that things were serious because of her interference. She said, Don't worry, fiancé's not making me call you on her behalf. The call was weird. She made me promise I was still going to a family dinner that was planned for Saturday. I had forgotten about it but I said I still planned on it for now. She begged and said we needed to see each other and work on this. So I said, fine, I'll do it. Based on how she's behaved before, I think she will try to approach me with a compromise that gives her 80% and gives me 20%. I don't expect an apology. Maybe I'm being a defeatist. Anyway, I'm on a couch at my friend's place for a couple of days. I get a text message every few hours from Future Mill. An example. You have chosen very tasteful flowers. I think they'll be beautiful, and you were right to ignore me. With rainbow heart emojis added, I think she's worried the wedding might not happen, and she's freaking out. I haven't responded to any of her texts. I have 13 right now. Future Mill has been horrible to me at family dinners before. She has forgotten that I'm coming and had nothing for me to eat I'm a vegetarian. She pulled a vegetarian frozen meal out, and I ate that while everyone else had homemade food because everything had meat or animal fat in it this has happened twice. Other times I've had to eat side dishes, which was fine, but they didn't have a place setting for me and dragged a rickety old chair from another part of the house to the table while I stood there awkwardly. If either of those things happens on Saturday, I'm leaving. Since she made me promise over the phone, I don't think she has an excuse to forget. Update. As a reminder, my ex-fiancé and I are both women. Last time I posted, I said I was going to dinner with my then-future in-laws. You guys were right to convince me not to go. I'm just going to call my ex-fiancé's mom F. Mill to keep things simple. But I have no idea if I'll get married to her, or if our relationship will survive this. I cancelled dinner, and F. Mill was very upset about it. I didn't feel right playing happy family, while I wasn't even sleeping at my own place, because things were so bad. I think she knew about all of it based on how frantic she was about the cancellation. She sent me a lot of texts and started calling me about five times a day, which I ignored. XF, and I had Monday off. So I decided Sunday would be a good time to talk. I arranged a time to talk and went back home. I said that I was calling off the wedding because I didn't feel ready. I said, I'm not saying never, just not now. 
we have some work to do if we ever want to get married. I won't go into the whole conversation because it took place over many hours, but she first got nasty and sarcastic and mean before suddenly bursting into tears and telling me she knew she had been horrible to me and she didn't know why. She said an ugly side of her was coming out lately and she was ashamed of herself. We spoke about that for a long time and I said I'm willing to work with you on that as long as you work on yourself. She even agreed that we are nowhere near ready to be married. I ended up spending the night and things seemed like they were on the mend. I woke up and she'd gotten up early to make crepes. She was singing in the kitchen and had a huge smile on her face when I walked in. I hadn't seen her look so happy in months. We talked, laughed, and ate crepes, but halfway through breakfast, she snapped at me and threw a spoon across the kitchen. I was stunned and looked at her and said, This can't continue. If you ever throw something in anger again, I'm out. That's not okay. She looked pretty horrified that she'd done it and said she was so sorry and she'd ruined our whole day off together. I said no, it doesn't have to be ruined. Just show me that the rest of the day can be better than that. She seemed to take that to heart, and she hasn't even teased me or said anything sarcastic since then. In a nutshell, we found that the source of the nastiness and dismissiveness was that she was scared of getting married and didn't know how to tell me because I seemed so excited. She thought I would dump her if she asked for the wedding to be pushed back or cancelled. She was pushing me away emotionally because she didn't want the wedding to happen. What she did wasn't okay, but at least I understand the motivation behind it better now. We decided that the first people to find out should be the vendors because we want to forfeit as little money as possible, and then the parents. I called my dad, and he was pretty nice about it. XF called her own parents, and they were not happy. F. Mill made her promise that she would take three weeks to think about it and keep this a secret. I disagree. I think guests should be told as soon as possible because some of them might not have paid for hotels, wedding outfits, or airline tickets yet. I would rather save them the money if possible. F. Mill has called and texted me dozens of times, asking me to say nothing. She has also offered to send us both on a vacation to reconnect and get away from wedding stress. I think she will be really embarrassed if the wedding is called off, and she's becoming desperate. I am under no promise to F. Mill, and I told all of the guests in my family. All of my friends know because they've been helping me through this, and so that just leaves family members on XF's side. I have all of the guests' information because I handled STDs and invitations. I am thinking of just calling them because I think it's the right thing to do, but it will start a war with F. Mill. Conclusion Update I told my ex-fiancé that she needs to call her guests within 24 hours, or I'll do it for her. She told me she wasn't doing it at all, so I may as well just do it for her and start now. That's the last straw. I'm calling the guests and telling them as soon as I'm done typing this. I was putting up with enough disrespect from her myself, but to see her disrespect all of the wedding guests in her family disgusts me. She has some elderly relatives who are going to come despite their poor health. They deserve as much warning as possible. I'm moving out as soon as I can. Thanks for everything, everyone. Hopefully this is the last you will hear from me. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, We've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.